just because he lost a fight or got sparked shouldn't mean that you should quit boxing like This is John Canagan of Fifth Pro Boxing Fans, joined by the Norfolk Nightmare himself, Tommy Fletcher. It's Monday morning, uh, grafting hard, October 18th. Isn't that long away? Uh, Tommy, how are you feeling? Yeah, it's great, mate. Monday morning, woke straight up, straight in the gym. I'm living boxing, breathing boxing, smashing it every day in the end. But um, yeah, now nah, I feel very good. I feel fit, healthy. I'm 22 years old and I'm, uh, I'm smashing it, I'm smashing it. Yeah. Uh, before we uh, talk about your fight coming up, uh, you were at the fight on the weekend at Wembley Stadium. Uh, what did you make of uh, Dubois knocking out Joshua? Yeah, you know what? I was, uh, I'll was. i be honest, I wasn't expecting Dubois to win that much, but I said I wouldn't be surprised if he did chin him and knock him out. And look what happened. I think it was a uh, very fan-friendly show and main event fight. It was great to watch. Um, shout out to my promoter, Frank Warren in Queensbury for... Uh, hooking me up with the tickets, I had inner ring size, proper, proper seats, it was very, very nice of them to do that. And uh, yeah, it was a great, great show to watch. I think Dubois, he just, he seemed, Anthony Joshua, he's got a devastating power in both hands, hasn't he? He just didn't, Dubois just didn't respect him enough to like sit off him too long. He, he just, he went steaming in at him and when he, when he gambled, he landed. I thought Joshua looked too upright, he looked too, He's a tall, rangy fighter, Joshua, although he, he does go looking for his opponents at times, but I thought he was he was up to he was standing up too right. He didn't didn't move his head enough. And uh, he just looked like he didn't really get going that well. I think um, in as the fight went on, I see him he looked like he was trying to get his jab going. He looked like he try, he was trying to get himself in back into the fight. But every time Dubois let off and got his shots off, he just put him over. He just hurt him real bad. Like he's, he put him over. But this is boxing, you know, heavyweight boxing, ten ounce gloves. It's a hit, kill or be killed type sport. You know what I mean? <clears throat> now, so many people saying that Joshua is done. Joshua should retire. What's your opinion? Should he call it a day? <clears throat> excuse me. Earned millions, millions. But there's still potential rematch. The Fury fight. Like, what, what do you think Joshua will do? He said he's going to continue. This is the brutality of boxing fans and just sport as well. Like, if you lose a couple fights, people say, "Ah, oh, you should retire. You should do this. You should do that." People are forgetting he's an Olympic gold medalist, and uh, like, no one. It's no one's. No one's got the power to say you should quit boxing. If he enjoys going down the gym doing boxing training and he enjoys fighting, win, lose or draw, and still getting paid x amount of money for it if he enjoys doing it and that's that's his passion then so be it like just because he lost a fight or got sparked shouldn't mean that you should quit boxing like yeah okay i know he got hurt and your health is your wealth but like there's still big fights that he can be in and like there's still good fights for him out there i think if he enjoys boxing and and that's his passion he should continue doing what he loves and that because obviously it's, it's clear that he, that he enjoys it obviously like obviously he wouldn't be doing it so no one's got the right to say he should pack up, he should do this, he should do that. It's uh, solely his decision and his choice. But you see, you see it so with so many fighters. They say, oh, they lose a couple fights. They are, oh, you should, you should quit. You should do this. Oh, you're finished. I don't really agree with that at all. Like the fighter knows, or, or his team, when the, when it's time to hang up the gloves. If you're like, if you generally have wear and tear on your body, or, or their speech is slurred. Do you know what I mean? If it gets like getting a bit punchy, then fair enough. You should. I think health is wealth. But if he still speaks well, he still looks well, and I think if he still enjoys it, he should continue doing it. Do you think he should go straight? into the rematch with Dubois? Well look, he, his team and him, he will know what he should do, but I'll be honest, I don't, I feel like it was so broad, the fight, that a rematch is not really needed, because I feel like Dubois may, or Dubois will probably chin him again, if I'm honest, I think that's what I think personally, but um, I've done an interview previously, I said, oh, I think AJ will win that, his IQ's too high, now I hold my hands up to it and say, Dubois will win the rematch, and he, and he won that, obviously won that last fight, so um, it's all, this is boxing. 
boxing. This is actually boxing. People say, oh, this is a one-sided fight. You see, you see top-level prospects getting knocked out by journeymen with like 50 losses. Like it, you're hitting each other in the head. That's how it goes. That's what it's like boxing, isn't it? You know what I mean? And uh, in terms of Dubois, <clears throat> if he doesn't take the rematch, who would you like to see him fight? Uh, you've got obviously the Usyk rematch. Fury, uh, who, who do you who do you want to see him in with next? I'd like to see him fight Fury. I think that'd be a good fight, very good fight. But um, I know a lot of people want to see the Usyk rematch. But I think I think he's obviously got a good bit of momentum and his confidence will be really, really high right now. So he may be able to do better against Usyk. But I think Usyk is a completely different. Di completely different kettle of fish, completely different category in terms of like skill and IQ. As you've seen, he, he, uh, he made Joshua look a little bit silly in that fight, almost, you know what I mean? So I think it, it'll be a tough fight for him, but like I said, this is boxing, anything can happen. No one thought, not many people thought that he would beat Joshua and, and, and he chinned him. So. How do you think Dubois would do against Tyson Fury? I think it'd be a good fight. I think if Fury's got life in his legs and he's still, still up for it, trains well, well, he, will, he could play with Dubois, but then again, like Dubois's got big, big punching power, and he's got a very, very good jab. I think his jab's been massively underrated, so it would be a good fight. I think the fans would love to see it, but who knows? We'll see when the fight's made, won't we? We'll see. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of yourself, Tommy, uh, October 18th at your call. Um, yeah, to tell the fans what they can expect. And uh, do you know who your opponent is yet? Yeah, I've got a, uh, I've got a decent record opponent. I think he's had 15 fights, um, 10 wins, three losses, and only two draws. So he's got a, he's got a very positive record. Um, I think he's quite a tall. I can't pronounce his name. I know he's. I can't pronounce his. Like, but um, he's Latvian. I think it'd be well up for it. It'd be very, very up for this fight. And uh, I hope. I know I'll do a job on him and I'll win in good fashion. I mean, I'm training hard. I'm training. I'm. I'm in this gym every day, twice a day training. Or you know what I mean. So I'll be well up for the fight. And I hope everyone enjoys it. And you know, what have you been told in terms of like how many fights you got towards the end of the year? Do you, do you think you can get one more in, depending on how this fight goes? Yeah, obviously I'm fighting October 18th, but I'm not going to look past any fight or any opponent. If I win in good fashion, then Frank will possibly want to get me out again before the end of the year. I hope he does. I'll be, um, I'll fight every weekend if I can. You know what I mean? So maybe in Saudi Arabia, you sit Fury card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to get on that card. You know what I mean? Sign me up, you sit Fury or whatever. Uh, any part of Saudi, I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> now, nah, in a, I've got to get through October the 18th first, win that in good style, and then I'll look forward in what my next move will be. And uh, you know, you, you're having world-class uh, sparring leading up to the fight. I don't know if you can mention names, but if if you want to, uh, let everyone know you're sparring. Yeah, I've been sparring some very good operators. Um, I'm sparring Chris Bill and Smith tomorrow. He's a he's a world champion, isn't he? So like, you can't really get much better work than that. But um, yeah, I've had loads of good sparring for this fight, and um, I'll continue to continue my development as a professional boxer. I'll continue having tough sparring, good sparring, all sparring. <laughs> you know what I mean, all sparring. And, um, you know, are you looking to get a knockout, or do you want to sort of get the rounds in? Of course, man. I'm always looking for a knockout every time. But um, yeah, knockouts don't always come. But uh, you got. I'm just want to win the fights and look good doing it, and then keep leveling up, keep moving forward, taking steps forward, and keep winning in good fashion. Tommy, tell everyone where to follow you. Yeah, follow my socials: Instagram Tommy Fletcher Seven. My Twitter is Tommy Fletcher Zero. My TikTok is Tommy Fletcher. I've got to remember them all now. Try, I forget them all, but um, just type in Tommy Fletcher. I'm sure you'll find them. You know what I mean? There you go, Tommy. Uh, appreciate your time and. Uh speak to you closer to the fight. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it. It's like I say, uh, shout out to all my sponsors, all my team. Without you all, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. Let's have it. Let's smash it.